Uh, good morning and welcome uh, to everybody here today. Uh, it's a great pleasure to me to know that you're all here to discuss, I guess, one of the most important issues of our time, the energy transformation. And all of these bright minds in the room uh, and the wisdom that you bring are going to be uh, a wonderful set of discussions and thinking about the challenges that are involved. Can I start, however, by acknowledging the traditional owners of the lands on which we're meeting and paying our respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. And I'd like to thank uh, the Aboriginal people for willi their willingness to share uh, their culture uh, with us and old and living uh, culture. I think Australia will be much better for it. This foresighting forum, Energizing Australians, which is a wonderful title, really encapsulates the great challenge that we've got and that we're here to discuss. Uh, we're on the way to uh, a low carbon future, and that is a big challenge in its own right. And I don't want to underestimate how difficult that challenge is for all of us and the magnitude of it. And I think we're up for it. Uh, uh, consumers will have a lot of changes that they need to make themselves, and that's part of the work that we need to do in enabling that to happen. But even more challenging, I think, than the uh, decarbonization, without underestimating both the technical and behavioral and so on challenges involved in the decarbonization. But uh, we can actually decarbonize our system um, without actually changing the system itself, the energy system itself. So you can replace those carbon emitting uh, fuels with ones that don't, but you basically have the same system. You've got the system of big generation coming down big wires, going down to little wires, going down to uh, plug-ins. The bigger challenge is the system redesign uh, that is involved in the decentralization uh, of energy uh, production. And uh, that involves not only a system redesign, but attitudinal redesign, if I can put it that way, and that's always the biggest challenge of all. So in my view, the system uh, redesign that is needed is first uh, the recognition that distributed power uh, production is not a variation on our current system. It is a fundamentally different system uh, we are going to be having power production that is local uh, by definition. It means that production is close to the site of consumption and the difference is fundamental to how the system evolves. And secondly, I think of recognition that distributed uh, generation requires system planners to start where the generation is. That means starting with the consumers and that's a big change. So the key recognition, I think, uh, that we're dealing with is that this is not simply the same system. It's actually a new system and it's not simply taking the old system that we've got and integrating all these pesky distributed energy bits uh, into the system that we've got. Now decision makers can look at this um, change in a couple of ways. They can define it as um, goodness, you know, this is a problem, all of this generation. Uh, but if they do that, it's going to lead to a couple of things, I think. Uh, one, if we define it in that way, then the almost automatic response is to seek to control all of this kind of uncoordinated and, un, uh, you know, unpredictable uh, uh, energy production and uh, consumption because the system has already has always had this kind of control. So people will seek uh, to do that rather than take the position, I think, of the kind of grand partnership uh, that we need in terms of this big change um, in consumers involved in a lot uh, of energy production. And defining consumer energy resources as a problem will also want us to not see the new system as reversed, a system which is, if you like, literally turned on its head uh, so that um, you have, you know, not a grid, but lots of grids here and there. You've got storage everywhere. You've basically got, uh, as I said, assets where con assets for generation where consumption is located um, and where and who controls those assets is, of course, quite critical. So if you if you just see it as a problem, you don't see it as the kind of energy transformation uh, that we actually have to undergo. So 
all of this second transformation, I call it the second transformation, the first being the decarbonization transformation, uh, but the decentralization needs to happen while we're trying to do the decarbonization. That's why it's such a big challenge uh, for us all. The two are coming uh, together. So here's the challenge I think put to you uh, at this Foresight M Forum. In these two days, we'll have a lot of arguments. Um, uh, we'll probably have some disagreements. We'll have agreements. We'll get lots of relationships forged. One of the great things about the Foresighting Forum is it brings together people from all the sectors that are interested in energy. So we've got a real opportunity for better understanding and trying to define how we shape this new future uh, that we're all moving towards and shape it well. Uh, from my perspective, and quite wonderfully, uh, the technical advancements that we have got in this second transformation, uh, consumers, consumer energy uh, resources, are also decarbonization contributions. So that's a great thing uh, that the two coincide. Uh, it's a big plus, but not so wonderful, I think, from my perspective, is that many uh, of the discussions about these technical advancements uh, would actually leave a lot of people behind, and that is not acceptable. Uh, in a society like ours. That's not an outcome that we want for a new system. So uh, a good outcome from a decentralized and consumer-oriented system, consumers at the center, people at the center, uh, is it's our best bet, uh, I think, for delivering an energy system that is affordable, uh, ensures accessibility, and ensures that it's not polluting the planet. So those are big outcomes. Uh, for us to get. I think it's been really hard uh, for us to admit that the decentralized energy system that we were basically handed as consumers in the 1990s uh, or so, I think it's been quite hard for us to admit that in many, many ways that has really failed uh, consumers despite some of the big pluses uh, that have been involved in that. Uh, but it's particularly failed people who are most vulnerable uh, in our society. So when I reflect you know, uh, on my time as chair of ECA, uh, one of the first things that happened uh, in terms of discussions uh, with people and comments from people um, was sort of being confronted at my first major meeting with the comment that you know, we have this terrific energy market with all of these competitors now uh, for consumers and um, these consumers are not switching, you know, and what is wrong with these consumers that they're not switching? So I sincerely hope that the advent of ECA uh, in these discussions with the perspective that ECA has uh, about the energy system, I think we would now recognize, I hope that we would now recognize that comment as being a quite elitist and arrogant comment, which is what it is. So we need to reflect uh, on that. Um, and nor should we, I think, repeat system designs that don't put people at the center, and that did not put people uh, at the center. It put efficiency uh, at the center. We need to design a system which is absolutely focused on the outcomes of, for people in our society and for their participation in that system and their contributions to it. So as I have been writing this and, uh, and as I'm speaking to you, uh, today, I'm in my last few months as um, a chair of uh, ECA, which has been a, a wonderful experience. It's why I'm so sorry that I can't actually uh, be with you uh, today. Uh, I think it's an immense credit to the ministers who established ECA that they actually realized that they needed diff they really needed a different voice uh, in the room than what they were getting and uh, one that spoke from that consumer and small business uh, perspective, and that was the base of its expertise. So I think in my years of eight years of chairing um, ECA, I think it's made a huge difference in all credit uh, to the staff, the CEO and the board uh, who have made that, uh, that possible. And I want to wish the new chair exceedingly well at this point as I'm talking. Uh, we don't have a name. I hope we do have a name reasonably uh, soon. When I took up the job, I didn't think that the job was actually to reimagine a complete transformation uh, of a system, and that's what the job has turned out to be. So I wish the new chair exceedingly well uh, in continuing uh, with this work. And again, reiterate my great pleasure and thanks uh, to people who've all worked on these big problems with us and continue to work 
uh, with us in getting these good outcomes. So have um, terrific uh, foresighting uh, form. Uh, it'll be a great pleasure to have these discussions over these couple of days. But remember, uh, we are all experts here. That's why we're sitting here in this room. But remember that we're consumers. Uh, we have parents, um, we have kids, um, we have friends and family who've all got to navigate the system. And what we really need to do is keep that in mind and make sure uh, that we're designing a system that works for them. Thank you and have a great foresighting forum.